Hello, welcome. Uh, tonight, taking a look at teaming up the uh, Korg Volca Beats. Uh, we'll try to bring it in without screwing up my shot. I'm going to have to unplug everything. The Korg Volca Beats, uh, teaming it up with uh, a MIDI track here on the Digitone. And why I was excited about this is uh, the Volca Beats is a, is a you know pretty simple drum machine. Uh, but it only has a 16 step sequencer. So I was hoping to take advantage of the 64 step sequencer of the Digitone to make a bit more robust uh, drum patterns on the uh, on the beats. And I thought the Digitone would be an easy way to do that. And I've had mix, uh, a mixed success, I'll call it. It's not as easy as I'd hoped, but it is usable, but a, a bit of a pain in the butt. And let's uh, so we connect the beats here so we can play around a bit too. Plug in the MIDI in, thrilling. We'll make sure it works. Cool, so that's just me playing directly on the beats. All right, so I am just in, where am I? I think I was in C, cancel that, C10. So I'm in bank C, pattern 10, which I believe is just an empty pattern on the DigiCard right now. Nothing is on it, so when if I wanna get into the MIDI tracks, uh, I hit MIDI here. Uh, I picked MIDI track 4 to be my drums and the first thing I need to do to get the Digi Digicart to do anything is I got to enable, um, not on this page, but on this uh, synth 1 or synth 2 will take here to the MIDI source. I got to set the channel. So in this case my beats is listening for me on channel 4. Uh, let's see what happens. Here I gotta hold down function, push this down. Right now on channel one, nothing's gonna happen. Let's switch it to channel four. Cool. I'll set that. Nothing's so. up. There we go. So that was my first major issue with using the Digitone to control the beats. As you know, it'd be nice if one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you get it on the uh, the trig keys here. Would you know play. You know, on the on the beats, part one is the kick, part two is the snare, and you get it. But no, I will put a link to this document. But this is the MIDI implementation chart uh, for the Korg Volca beats, and you can see I um, I added some notes in your pencil. But you know, MIDI note 36 is going to play the kick, MIDI note 38 the snare, and so on. Um, so. For example, I can stumble through the octaves here. So that is MIDI note number 36, which plays the kick. So basically the way it works is there's a keyboard here, right? And I tried to play around these scales to try to match it up to the MIDI notes that the beats requires. Couldn't do it. I was hoping on the Digitone that you could set these trigs up to play a specific MIDI note. You kind of can do that through... Uh, the grid recorder, but not through manual play like this. So you have to hunt around either knowing the MIDI note or, you know, the, the key it's under. So C1 for the kick, D1 for the snare. So anyway, so that was my first big struggle of it is, well, that's not intuitive. You know, I tried to plug in uh, the key step to see if it was any easier on the key step. Same problem. Uh, did a bit more research and really um, the beats is set up to a traditional MIDI uh, numbers and I can't change it on the beats either. I can't change what it's receiving for what, what parts it plays. So it's nothing I can do with the equipment I have now. But it's set up to be played with like a drum pad. So if I had a Beat Step Pro instead of a Key Step, I think there'd be no trouble on the key, on the Beat Step Pro to use that. I don't have one, but I read that that oh yeah, you're gonna have a hard time with it on the Key Step. But something with a Beat Step Pro that has programmable programmable <laughs> part of me um, drum pads, you can set those drum pads to play a specific part and you can cue it in. So that was the biggest issue. But how do I work around that? Well, what you can do here is. Get out of here. We'll go into the grid recorder here. And you can, so I'm in grid control, grid recorder right now. So if I hold down this and I push this, I can say, hey, for this note, play that one. Hit yes. And now it's going to, when, it, when the uh, sequencer goes through, 
It's going to play that. So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it, so let's say I'm just going to set up a four basic kick on the beginning of every four steps. Uh, so I'll go here. I can go here. If I hold this down, i got to go to the trig of settings. But if I hold this down, I can look at my beautiful uh, manual here. I can see the kick is on part 36. I change this number here to 36. And let's see what that does. I shouldn't have thrown my, oh shit. <laughs> I shouldn't have thrown my notes on the floor because I'm gonna need them. Let's see what happens. Alright, say you don't want to do that for every single one, you can use this copy function. So you hold down copy, push the part, and then I can hold down, oops, screw that up. Let's go back to the grid recorder, pardon me, hold down the trig, hit copy, that's paste. Hold down the trig I want to paste it on top of, hit paste, paste it there, same for 13. Now I should have a basic kick beat. So, as long as you have the manual and you know which MIDI notes trigger which parts on the beats, you can configure it that way. And uh, it's, it's, it's doable, right? Not as lovely and easy as I'd like it to be, but I can live with that. It just means whenever I'm playing around with the beats and the digitone, I'm going to have to have a little cheat sheet or something pasted down here where I can uh, know. Maybe I'll, I'll put it right on the beats. Uh, which which media notes trigger which parts? Okay, so how do you do two parts at the same okay, time? Okay, so we set up a you know a very simple kick beat. Let's say we want to add a snare to it. And now one of the things uh, the uh, the beats gets beaten up on, <laughs> no pun intended, is the uh, the snare. A lot of people don't like the snare sound, so they like to layer a clap of it at the same time. So let's go ahead and add in let's let's add in the snare. So if I look at my cheat sheet here. Snare is uh, set to MIDI note 38. So let's cycle through here till we hit 38. It's a, also a D. So let's see what happens now. Cool, right? But you know, what if we want to put the uh, clap over it? Well, I go and hold this down. And I go in here and I see, you know, the clap is 39. So I'm like, okay, well, I'll change that to 39. But when I do this, we're going to lose that snare. Just got the clap. So how do we fix that? So this is where it gets a little bit more tricky. It's not too bad, but you have to hold it down. We'll set it back so we get our snare back. Hold it down. What you have to do is you got to hold not hold push up here and what you got to do is while you hold this down is figure so you if you look at my notes I also have the mini part but I also have the key that's assigned to it so you probably can't see it but I I got the clap it says uh, D1 or D sharp pardon me so I there we go that should be the clap and I hit yes so it's added that on top of it so let's see what happens now Oh, I screwed that up. So here's the thing. If you push up, you have to say yes to uh, the clap. And then I also have to go down and say yes to uh, the snare. I screwed that up. Sorry. So that's, that's how you can play more than one note at once. So there we go. And then if I don't want to do that for every single other part I want the trigger on, I can just hold it down once again, go copy and paste it to where else I want it to go on the pattern. And then if I want to get rid of one. So cool, eh? And you can keep adding in um, parts and beats like that as, as demonstrated above. I think you can even add in more than the 16 steps. There's, there's micro steps. We're not going to go with that deep today. The only other thing I want to show you uh, with the MIDI settings, which is cool, is let's say we got this beat going. There's some simple knobs on the, uh, 
on the beats like these stutters which you can add an effect I'm using the beats right now doesn't sound good you know so you Stutter effect doesn't work <laughs> too well with this beat, but let's say for some reason you want to do that on the digitone, like you have your beats way down in your setup, you can't reach to it. Um, you can actually control those um, those stutter dials directly on the uh, on the digi uh, digitone. So how do you do that? Well, you gotta go to this amp menu, and what what we need to do is on our manual again you can see we can have control change so parts 40 to 49 uh, pardon me MIDI function 40 to 49 is going to control the part level so um, it's going to control how loud the kick sounds if you set it to 40 or how loud the snare sounds if you send it to, set it to 41 but in this case we want to find stutter time and stutter depth so 54 and 55 so let's go ahead and set that to 54 up here and we'll set B to 55. And okay, cool, we got stutter control, right? So let's go ahead and push play and see what happens. Nothing. So where we're actually gonna control those values is with the knobs here, but you can look at the menu right here and everything's X'd off. We have to enable them. To enable them, we have to hold down function and actually push them down on the, uh, the digitone. And now let's see what happens nothing until I actually start playing with the values. So you can see, the one nice thing about the digitone versus the uh, controlling it on the beats, well, the beats, you're not getting a specific zeroed in value from zero to 127. You got much more direct control of it on the digi uh, tone. And so, yeah, you can go ahead. You have eight values that you can assign to any of these things. So the stutter time, the decay of the toms or the hats. Yeah, so that's that's basically what I want to show you. So if you want if you wanted to enable control, direct control on the digitone for the others, like for example, let's what well we got the beats. Uh, we got the uh, kick level, which should be 40. So let's set that up. So we'll walk through it again one more time. So let's turn C here down to 40. Let's push play so we can hear the beat. Let's get rid of the delay again. So let's turn off the stutter effect. Let's see if we can control the sound of the, the kick. There we go. So now it's off. So it's just a simple way to control the level of the uh, the kick. Anyway, it's about all I got to show you. So uh, uh, the reason why I'm digging into this is because out of all the because the beats are the one I'm considered getting rid of, but. If I can make it work as part of this setup, it might be worth kicking around for until I get a better drum machine. You know, the circuit was my drum machine, but now that I have the uh, Digitone, uh, I think the Digitone is going to be doing a lot of work the circuit used to do, and the circuit's just going to be kind of a, you know, something I can play on the couch or outside of the basement a little easier. I don't know, maybe I'll team it up with the micro core see what I can do there. Anyway, regardless, um, that's all I got for you now. I'll keep digging away on this thing as I play around and figure things out. I'll, I'll continue to share it. Uh, any questions, shoot them below. Otherwise, have a good one.